In this video, we're going to show you how to create your first approval using Microsoft Flow. So stay tuned. Welcome back. So, have you ever wanted to watch a SQL Server table or a SharePoint list or whatever it might be, some kind of data source, and as new rows come in, run a series of rules? Well, that's what we're going to show you today. The rules we're going to look at is a table that looks a little bit like this. So, we're looking at a, a table of time cards. And as if somebody were to submit more than eight hours a day of time card, in other words, looking for overtime, I want to be able to approve that overtime automatically through a series of uh, Microsoft Flow events. So that's what we're going to show you today is just how to do that. We're going to go through, and as a new row is inserted, we're to the table that we just showed you. As a new row is inserted, we're going to, uh, if it's more than eight hours, approve it. If it's less than eight hours, we're going to automatically approve it. And then uh, that approval will come through Microsoft Flow through an email, an app, as well as uh, on the Flow website as well. So we'll show that to you now. So let's begin. So the components we have here are essentially a table that you're seeing right now. This is our time card table. You'll notice, for example, also there is a, uh, a project ID. Well, this project ID is going to relate to another table. So we're going to have to do a join to that other table also. That's the first thing we've got. We also have a store procedure which you can see right here. Uh, now, this is optional. We could do an update inside of Flow, but I went and chose to make it a little more simple by creating a store procedure that does the actual update for us. So all this update is going to do is it's going to update the table and set the, uh, uh, set the approval status to approved or rejected based on the time card ID. So our next step is we're going to go over to Flow. And you'll notice under a flow, we have these approvals. These are past approvals I've already done. These approvals are will show up here, they'll show up on my phone, they'll show up inside of an email, and a whole bunch of other ways we can actually get access to those through the app on your phone. Really cool feature, one of the best features in Microsoft Flow. So let's go through and create our first flow to actually watch that table. So I'm going to go through and create a new entry, a new from blank in this case. There are templates for this, but this one's a little bit special because we're watching a SQL Server table in my case. So I'm going to create this flow from blank in my case. Uh, first thing I'll do is every flow has a trigger and has actions upon that trigger. So I'm going to search for SQL Server and we'll see, or see a series of actions we can watch for. Now in my case, we want to watch for a record that's been created. A few things about this trigger. It you need to make sure that you have an identity column on this table. In other words, it's not going to work for like if you have a table that has a GUID as your primary identifier. So some kind of identity column so we can track, hey, what is the latest ID I'm looking at? So the next thing I'm going to do, I've already created a connection. You'll see that connection right here. But I'm going to point to my table. My table is going to be the time card table. Really simple. That's all there is to watching that table. Next, I want to go through and actually say, hey, if it's more than eight hours, and do my approval process. So I'll create a new step. This is going to be a conditional step. There we go. If I go to control, you'll see condition. This is basically an if-then statement. And now we have our yes and our no. So what I want to look for is the number of hours. And you're seeing when an item is created right here, this is coming from that step right above it. And because of that, it's taking all the columns from that previous step and making them available to me now. So I want to look up the hours that were submitted. And if they are greater than or equal to, uh, there we go, maybe eight hours. Then I want to go ahead, if yes, I want to go ahead and do the approval. If no, I'm going to automatically approve it. Now, this may, of course, this may be a silly example. It may not be your business case, but let's go ahead and just kind of uh, uh, walk through this. So, in my case, I'm going to do another SQL Server action this time, not a trigger, but an action, and I'm going to run a store procedure. Let me kind of scroll down a little bit here, and we're going to run the store procedure three times total. Once for, uh, here we go, once for this case here, where we're approving it automatically, and then once for the uh, uh, manual approvals. So, here we go. I'm going to take a status change. I then need the status. I'll, I'll put this as, how about auto, auto approve? So we can tell this was the system that auto approved it. And then the time card ID, we kind of slide the right or zoom out a little bit there. There's my time card ID right there. Okay. So you can tell it's looking at the data types and it's automatically telling me what does the, this data type needs an integer. And because of that, it's choosing the right one in my case. So now my time card's been auto approved. Now on the yes side, yes, it's more than greater than or greater than or equal to eight hours. Uh, actually, it probably needs to be greater than or equal to nine hours. So that'd be over time. But let's, let's, let's go ahead and go with that. 
Uh, so it's greater than or equal to nine hours. Let's go ahead and do an approval. So we can search again for the actions. We'll do an approval action. And here we go. There's our approval. And I'm gonna do and choose and wait for the approval. And I'm gonna choose the V2 approval. So we're gonna start and we're gonna wait for an approval. So we'll start and wait for it right here. And we'll choose a V2. We'll cover in a later time what the what the what that means and what does it what does it mean to have the um, uh, the approval process for V2 versus V V1. Next, we're going to ask, what, well, what kind of piece do we want? Well, I want to go ahead and I'm going to send it to maybe three people. And as soon as the first person responds, we're going to move this on. So maybe the project manager, the business unit owner, whatever it might be uh, to do that. We can also make sure everyone approves this before the employee gets that overtime also. So there's a number of ways we can do this. Let's go ahead and choose uh, first to respond because I don't want to hold up everything in case that manager might be out of town. Really simple to configure. We'll go ahead and give it a title of some sort. Uh, let's gonna say um, uh, username. So let's go ahead and find our, our username here. There's our time card user. Okay. Has entered time more than eight hours. Do you approve? Okay, this is just the, the title of the email that the approval is going to go. Uh, what email address is it going to be? I'll just pick my email address right now. This should, in my case, you'll see right here, there actually is a, a project owner, this time card user right here. Uh, we actually can look at another table, that project table, to get the, uh, the user and get the, the project manager for the project. But we'll, we'll keep it simple and just hard code my email address right here. Okay. All right, and then the details. So what, what, what do we want to do here? We have to provide like a, uh, an extra information. We'll keep it simple and just go with this information right now. So that's all there is to doing an approval. Now, what do we want to do after that? We want to go ahead and say, did they approve or not? So I'm going to, I'm going to get, then pick my condition again, and I'll say, all right, look at this. So now we have the response. So what kind of response, what kind of outcome came of that? Was it an approval? Was it not? So when I select an outcome, we can say is it equal to approved. And then we'll show you some how to debug this stuff also as we get into this. So is it approved? And if it's approved, no quotes are needed in this case. So the outcome is the approval. And there's a lot of other things we have uh, here. We have, hey, what extra comments do they add? So if they added comments to it, you may want to store that into a database table also for us to find out why was it approved for overtime. So lots of good stuff we can do here. But this gives you a general who is the approver, you know, all sorts of good stuff we can do. We can even loop for and wait for a whole bunch of approval processes. So if it was approved, again, we're going to go through and just give a SQL Server action again. All right. And we'll just do and execute a store procedure. There we go. And on the no front, if it was not approved, again, same exact thing again. We'll go ahead and do a store procedure again. Whoop, there we go. Okay. Again, the same exact process again. We'll just go ahead and pick our store procedure. Pick it on the right as well. There we go. And these are going to look almost identical here, right? So we have the status on this on the right side. It was not approved. We'll put rejected. And the time card ID was a time card ID from that previous step. Let me go ahead and slide out a little bit so we can see it. There's our time card ID right there. Okay, we zoom back in on the right. Same thing on the right here. We'll pick the time card ID. And then we'll pick the status of approved. We could put manually approved or whatever so you can kind of see it, but you guys will get the idea. Now we can also put a step in here if we wanted to, to look up the project name or the, the project manager from that. And then from that, we can go through and ultimately figure out, you know, who should I send this email to? There's a step in there called get rows for a SQL Server, and that would pass it up, pass it as a foreign key and get back the row from the front primary key. So that's an option as well if you chose to do that. In my case, we'll keep this really simple because this is more about the approvals and less about the referential integrity of the database and all that. So going back over to my system again, uh, let's go ahead and give us a better name. Let's put this, uh, call this, okay, YouTube uh, time card approval, something like that. Okay, with that now done, let's go ahead and save this and let's send a row through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up, uh, you can see as I go back over here and we'll look at some debugging, I'm gonna go back to my management studio, add a row and we'll see what happens. Typically speaking, it needs about 30 seconds, 10 seconds to come through and actually show that row in there. So let's give it a shot. So let's go back over to, uh, let's go back a step here, first of all, okay. And we'll see that, that status right here. And I'm gonna open up a SQL Server table. 
There's my time card table right there. And we'll put project ID 15. Uh, it was for, we'll call it nine hours. Let's do one for six hours first. Okay, 2019, and today is the, I don't know, 22nd. And then again, B9 at Pragmatic Works. And we'll leave this, I'll call this pending. Okay, good enough. Let's go ahead and copy down this row. And I'll put this one as 10 hours. Put a stats of pending there also. So we should see in a few moments here, a few rows or a few entries now in this item. So if I go back over to here again, it should be watching this table and hopefully now, oh, I'm now getting an alert on my phone. So there we go. We're now seeing approval requests. Let me kind of put this a little closer for you. An approval request has just come in. Actually, two of them have come in. One is for 10 hours and we go ahead and select that. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and reject this. So I'm going to go ahead and allow it to find my location. So there we go. It looks like this. I'll actually do it a, a, a view a little differently here later. I'm going to go ahead and reject that row. I can also auto assign it somewhere else. And when I confirm that this 10 hours were actually rejected, and we'll see it over here in approvals as well. So let's kind of look at that real quick as well. So we'll see it in the same window right here, the different hours that have been rejected. So there's my six hours I popped in, and the 10 hours one, it's already gone because I did on my phone. I also got an Outlook email as well, where I can go through it and approve or reject it right inside the Outlook interface. It actually integrated that whole experience inside of Outlook. Let's go ahead and uh, approve, you know, let's go ahead and leave this one alone for a few minutes here and let's see what happens. So if I were to refresh this table, okay, let's see what we got now. So we have one that's an auto approve, one that's still in a pending state. So something has potentially gone wrong here and let's find out what's, what that potentially is. So what we can do now is we can go over to the uh, My Workflows again. Let me go over there again, hit the refresh and we'll see what's, what actually is happening behind the scenes here. And what we're seeing here is one is still running. It's still kind of in a pending state right now. Let's find out which one actually succeeded first. And we can kind of debug, one of the nice things about, about this is we kind of dig into this and find out what's happened each step along the way. So we can see the auto approve took the right path in this case, so it went the right way. And for some reason, the other one didn't work. So let's find, or it's still running for perhaps. So let's go in here and figure out what's happening. So it's still in the condition stage and we can see it's waiting for an approval. And if we dig into it, we can actually find out what, what actually happens. So it looks like I may not have actually hit, oh, I, I, actually, actually, I didn't actually hit the uh, approve button here. And that could be the problem. Okay. So as soon as that approve goes process, that process goes through, we'll see this actually go through the next step. We can kind of debug it each step along the way. But this is how we can kind of debug these workflows. We can go inside of this and actually watch each step along the way to find out what's happening. So if I were to go back over to my approval, let's send, let's send one more row in actually. Let's go ahead and pop in. Let's leave that one kind of in a, in a, in a state of disappear. And let's, let's do another uh, maybe 20 hours this time through the process. There we go. And that's in a pending state. So now if I refresh this again, we should see the next row going through, hopefully in a moment. Take, again, it takes about anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. It's pulling that SQL Server every so often, waiting for a row to get added. So in our case, let's see if it actually is there. Oh, still running. In the next 10 seconds or so, we should see it go through. There we go, three minutes, three seconds. One note about this while we're waiting for this is if I go through and truncate this table, some of the things I've noticed is it's looking for a certain ID to get incremented. If I go through and truncate the table, it's going to reseed these IDs back to a known, known state. And by doing that, it would ultimately lose track of that. Now I'm getting an alert on my, my watch, on my phone, and hopefully my email as well. And now if I refresh this, so just know if you truncate the table, you're gonna have to go through and reseed these. So it can create some problems there. Let's go to approvals in this tab here instead this time. And we'll see, there's my 20 hours just popped in. Let's go ahead and approve that. Notice we have a room for comments now. Let's go ahead and confirm that. There we go. Okay, there we go, it's been approved in this case. So now my 20 hours is gone. And if I, re if I rerun this query again, hopefully we'll see the bottom one now has been approved. So 
What I showed you there is how to debug this mess a little bit. I, I still, of course, I still have the one pending because I haven't actually won the whole approval process. But we were able to see where was it in the process. There's also abilities inside the Microsoft, the Microsoft Flow to say, hey, eventually this times out and it rolls to a pending state again or rolls back and it sends out emails to alert people. I'll show that how to do that in a future video. But in this video, I just want to kind of show you the, the absolute basics of watching a table, watching something, and then giving approvals based on that. This is all part of our Microsoft Flow class you can find at pragmaticworks.com. And we also do this for many companies out there. So you can also go to the Power, uh, powerplatformpros.com and we can build a flow like this for you or a power app like this for you as well. I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day. Look forward to uh, seeing you in future videos where we go deeper into this technology. Have a great day.